Good morning, Christ and St. Luke's and friends. Today is Wednesday. I've got my Peruvian coffee cup here, and we're ready to go. And today, the Episcopal Church remembers Frederick Denison Morris, a priest and theologian of the 19th century. F.D. Morris was born in 1805, the son of a Unitarian clergyman. He studied civil law at Cambridge, but refused the degree in 1827 rather than declare himself an Anglican. However, he eventually became a member of the Church of England and was ordained a priest. He was known as a Christian socialist. Uh, Christian socialism was a, a particularly brand particular brand of Christianity and socialism that, uh, that really focused the message of Jesus on this world uh, and on the needs of others. And as a result of that, socialism in the United Kingdom does not carry the weight of negativity that it does in the popular mind in the United States. It really was about the concern for others and the sharing of resources with others. Because as Sam Pertero says in his book, Brightest and Best, uh, Reflections on the Lesser Feasts and Fast, uh, for Morris, the kingdom or the realm of God is not some place set apart after this world, but is simultaneously with our human experience. The realm of God is not something to which we aspire, to which we can one day retire. The realm of God, says Father Patero, is here and now, though hidden and distorted by the systems we've created around ourselves. The exchange between Jesus and Pilate in John's Gospel captures the tension of this proximity of the kingdom of God. Are you the king of the Jews, Pilate demands of Jesus, who replies, my kingdom is not from this world. F.D. Morris, Frederick Denison Morris, one of the saints of the Episcopal Church. So let's begin our morning prayer by our breath prayer. If it's helpful, close your eyes and we'll take a few deep conscious breaths. And as you breathe out, feel your body just relax a little bit. Notice the places of tension and the thoughts that come across the screen of your mind. And draw up from within the worries and concerns the dreams of the night before, and as you breathe them out, imagine that you're releasing them, but not into thin air, but into the breath of God. God to surround, to hold, to carry, and to transform in ways sometimes we cannot imagine.
And so the service of morning prayer will start in your Book of Common Prayer, if you have one with you, on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Venite is found on page 82, and we'll begin with the Lenten Antiphon and end with the Lenten Antiphon. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for the lesser feasts of Frederick Denison Morris is Psalm 145. Psalm 145, and you can find that in your Book of Common Prayer on page 801. Page 801. Psalm 145, and while you go to that page, I will have a sip of coffee, and maybe you'll have one with me. Psalm 145, on page 801. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful to all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord. 
and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel reading for the Lesser Feast of F.D. Morris is John 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And the one who sent me, and they have eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The response to the reading is found on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. It is Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, 
the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Collect for the Feast of F.D. Morris. Almighty God, who has restored our human nature to heavenly glory through the perfect obedience of our Savior, Jesus Christ, enliven in your church, we pray, a passion for justice and truth, that like your servant, Frederick Denison Morris, we may work and pray for the triumph of the kingdom of your Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Grace, found on page 100. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a collect for mission on page 101. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And a prayer from Winchester Cathedral for these times. God of heaven and hope, may this time of danger by your Holy Spirit bring out the best and not the worst in us. Show us the ways in which we can share faith and love while standing at a distance and honor our connection with one another and with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. From the prayer wall, we have a request for a prayer for uh, this person's friend, Rick Clark. His wife is recovering from a stroke last week. Another person asked our prayers for Sabu and his family. Sabu has the coronavirus. Another person asks us, please pray for our son who works in hospital. Another person asks our prayers for that person's brother-in-law, John, who may have COVID in Richmond and is waiting on results. Another person uh, asks uh, our prayers for her. She had a nasty fall the other day, and she's asking prayers for healing and comfort for pain, and prayers for her son Alex and her husband Joe, who are both her caretakers now for many weeks, for their health and safety, and good health for her daughter Kate, who continues to work with challenged 
young adults and exposes herself to those who may have COVID-19. Another person asks our prayers for her friend who has, has surgery this coming Friday to remove a tumor, that her surgery may be successful and her treatment and healing may be done safely and completely. Another person asks our prayers for her mother who was just diagnosed with breast cancer and will soon be starting chemotherapy, putting her at risk for COVID-19. Prayers for Glenn and all healthcare workers. And I also include Robin in our prayers. Prayer for a son out of touch with his family and a daughter and her spouse who have lost their jobs. Prayers for Susan, who is recovering from heart surgery, and Judy. Prayers for Norwood, who is an EMT on the front lines. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And that completes our morning prayer. That little sound you heard is, is my wife Kathy coming in, and that little jingle is our security system. But uh, Kathy always likes to have a little bit of a of an announcement when she walks into the room. So, uh, so anyway, she's laughing now. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Uh, if you can, uh, please stay home. Uh, and if you're out working because you are caring for others, God bless you. And remember that we are collecting food for the homeless feeding. Uh, you can very safely drop them off uh, by putting them in the church vestibule, the office vestibule at the end of the Litchgate Garden, come through the Iron Gates, come all the way down the, uh, the walkway up the stairs, and you will see the door is open there, the outer door, the inner door is locked. Uh, that will be open from noon to 3 p.m. this afternoon. And special blessings to Nicole Pabst and her crew, who are feeding the homeless tomorrow. They're doing it safely, uh, maintaining distance, and also wearing masks and gloves. Please also pray for them. Take care.